Hi there, my name's Ruth from Gothic Decay and I make embroidery that looks like this. So today I'm going to be making a leaf bowl. Um, this is not the best example I know, but um, I'm just gonna show you, oh, sorry about the drippy noise, by the way. Anyway, I'll come back to that. Um, this, you know, when you get leaves that are just, they've been on the ground for a while and they're all starting to decay and have got little holes in them. Well, what I was trying to do, this is not the best example I know, but it's the one I managed to find, um, is to recreate this the best I could. So you've probably seen before I did a video on creating leaves made out of tea bags. So today I'm going to show you how you can use that to turn into a little leaf bowl. So what we're going to start with is um, this stuff called Solvi. Now, I am happy to admit that I am not an expert at machine embroidery, so I'm just going to show you what I found worked for me. But this is a kind of um, quite a fabric-y um, uh, dissolving fabric. So when you put this in warm water, it'll just disappear. Uh, as I say, I'm not an expert in this, but I found a way to make it work for me. If you have better ways of making it work, then you use those. That's absolutely fine. So I had... Uh, an original leaf that I traced, um, the chase just the veins of, yeah. So what I'm going to do is trace those leaves onto this piece of solving with the pen that I have put somewhere safe and lost. Is it here? Yes, apologies for the dripping noise. Um, we're in the process of moving house and soon I shall have my own lovely big studio which doesn't have drippy noises and things because I live in Swansea in Wales one of the wettest cities in Britain. And Britain's not exactly known for its dry weather. And uh, everything drips when it rains. So I'm sorry about all the noise. Soon we will be in another house and hopefully it won't drip. Maybe. So, there we go. I want them to be reasonably dark in a pen because this is going to get wet. We don't want this to um, to spread. So be careful what kind of pen you use. You know, if you were to use um like a big felt tip or something, it might um it might bleed into the tea bags when it when later on. So I'm just going to darken it up a little bit because I'm going to go over this on the sewing machine and my sewing machine doesn't have a light on it. So you have to make things really obvious. So then, next job is to have a cup of tea. And have another couple of cups of tea uh, and take the tea bag out um, and then leave it to dry somewhere uh, keep all the tea leaves in and eventually in a few days it'll be nice and dry, depending on where you live it'll be nice and dry um, and then just make a little tiny slit down the side and empty all the bits out and then these keep it to dry for a little bit longer just to make sure it's completely completely dry and you get these lovely um, papers with all kinds of different lovely patterns on them so all you do then is tear off the little bit that holds the tea bag together, the kind of pressed bit round the edge, like this. And there you've got two pieces like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this over to start with. I'm going to cover this where this is going to this is going to become a leaf basically. So what I'm going to do is cover the areas that are stitched with two layers of tea bag. Because I'm going to make it into a bowl, it's going to need a little bit of structure to it. So make sure there's always two layers of this paper before you um, start to stitch it. So I'm going to turn it over like that, and we've got two layers here. Is anything sticking out? They just about make it so you can get to make it with two tea bags, as it were. You know, there's just about enough if you kind of wiggle it around a little bit like that. Now, my sewing machine prefers this to have a piece of paper to kind of act as a bit of a stabiliser. If yours doesn't, fine, no problem. Just again, I'm just working with what, what happened to work for me. So I'm just going to pin this into place and tack it into position and then we're going to do a bit of machine stitching. While I'm pinning this I have a question for you and I would be incredibly grateful if you would um, let me know in the comments. 
would you be interested in a little kit to make this yourself at home? Um, my, con my concern is, what would it have in it? I mean, it would have perhaps this outline drawing and maybe some tea bags and some of the solvy, enough to make a bowl or whatever it might be. But I, it's, it feels like I'd be giving you some of my rubbish. So what do you think? I would love to know. Obviously, it would have the instructions, the written instructions on how to make the, the piece as well. Um, so anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. I would be very grateful. And what sort of price you would be willing to pay for such a thing. Because, as I say, if you look at it in terms of material costs, you've got um, some tea bags, which are basically going to go in the bin and a printout of some... Uh, I'm not selling it here, am I? A printout of um, the instructions. Anyway, let me know what you think. Um, if you think it's a terrible idea, that's fine. If you think it's a great idea, that's also fine. It would have the solvy in it too, so that would be the big thing. But then, I mean, you could buy that yourself if you want to. However, I thought it might be convenient to have a sort of a small amount of it in, you know, cut into the shapes that you needed sort, sort of thing, you know, um, rather than having to go and specifically hunt out and buy the particular one and only maybe, maybe you can only buy it by the meter. I, I don't know. But anyway, let me know what you think. I'll stop wittering now. So we're tacking this on here like this it's worth making for the leaf bowl i'm gonna make about maybe around 10. um i can't find the little glass i was going to use to um to mold this around quite at the moment but basically imagine you've got the little bowl there imagine this is the bowl get your little leaves with the um you know, work out roughly how many you're going to need to cover it. It's going to be around about 10, but I mean, if your bowl is going to be enormous, then obviously more than 10. And if you're doing a little doll's house bowl, then less than 10. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on again. So we are now tacked and ready for machine stitching. So I shall get my lovely machine out and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. So I'm not quite sure how this is going to come out, but what we've got here is the leaf all ready to go under the sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is stitch um, up and back and then all the way up here like that. And then when I get to the top, all the way back down to the bottom again. So up and back and then each of these. So basically, each of these sticky out bits will have veins, will have um, an up and a back stitching onto them. And this bit in the center will have um, three bits of stitching on it. So I'll see if I can make this work anyway. we go i hope that wasn't too jiggly um so all of this stitching is now in place so what i will now do is remove the tacking uh, from around the back of the sewing machine which is a little tricky but we'll get there like this maybe there like that and out tear off the paper I know the paper bit is a, is a pain and I'm sorry, but it's just the only way my lovely ka -chunk, ka chunk my sewing machine would, would, would eat tea bags and this modern newfangled nonsense. She's actually very good. She's, uh, she's the best sewing machine I've had for stitching through random stuff I've given her. And considering she's 100 years old, she's not, not, not grumpy at all. She's very good. She's, she eats up all kinds of fabrics that were even invented when she was 
when she was a baby sewing machine. Anyway, so we'll carry on with that and I will stitch them all together. No, I won't. Yes, I will. Exactly, yes. I'll stitch them all, pull all the paper off and then next time you see them, they will all be ready to go. Right, so we have now several of these, uh, about 10 of them probably. Um, so what we do is just cut back some of the excess um, dissolving fabric. Doesn't have to be exact, I'm sticking to me now because I've got a wet thing. Um, just so that there's, you know, you're not trying to dissolve away stuff that's not, not needed. So there we go, like that. So here we have some warm water. Oh, hang on, I should explain this first. This is going to be the cup that I mould the bowl around. So it can actually is quite surprisingly small um, because they, I don't know, it seems to, if you do it around them, it's something much bigger. It just looks a bit strange. So we've got this little tiny, tiny little bowl here. So kind of, well, that size. Um, and what I'm going to do is pop this in some warm water. Ta-da! Warm water. And for about 15 seconds. Now, because I'm stupid, I have to uh, count that in my head. There we go. And what we do is we place it on here. Whoops. Like this. And we flatten it out. What I forgot to do first, which was really stupid. Talking about my stupidity. Might as well really go for it. What we could do with is getting rid of this excess down here. Oh no, I'm really sticking to everything. Because we don't need all of that um, around here. So I actually need to take this off and do this again. Pretend I do know what I'm talking about. Same with the strings. The strings don't need to be there either. So we'll chop them off, not with the nice scissors, not while I'm this sticky. Um, we'll use these for now. There we go, right. So that's better. Right, there we go. Take two. So you smooth it on like that onto the bowl. And then you get another leaf and you do the same thing with that one. Now this one I've done slightly differently, so I'm just going to moisten that one and put it on. So ignore what I've done with that one for your purposes. Um, and we'll go back to this one. See, this is a one done properly. So I've torn the paper off this one, so that's a good idea. Everything's sticking to me. Right, so 15 seconds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 seconds because it seems to be a good approximation for how much um, you want to get rid of some of the, um, you don't want the solvy to still be there, so you want to dissolve it away, but you also want it to remain sticky because otherwise the bowl won't hold its shape. So, does that make sense? I hope so. So we just got to cross them over so you can see there. I'm going to move this one over a little bit, but there's a little hole has appeared in there, but that's okay. We'll just move it down a little bit like that. We're going to make holes all over it in a minute, so I want it to dry. So yeah, continue putting your leaves all the way around here. And I will be back to you when I've done that. Right, so we're all done. So now just have a little bit of a tinker and a play about with it, just to make sure it's all run, sort of lying nice and smoothly. It will, you know, there will be little folds and creases and things that appear, but that's not the end of the world, because like I say, we're gonna damage it and burn it in a second. Well, not in a second, when it's dry. See, I've forgotten to take these tails off again. I really do know what I'm talking about, I promise. It just make me nervous sitting there watching me. So just again smooth it all down like that. And now 
pop it somewhere to dry. So here we are, all nice and dry. It's all sort of crispy, like a leaf would be. So now the next job, because I was in a bit of a tiz, I forgot to chop these bits off again. So we'll snip these bits off to start. Okay. Oops. And now we take this off here. Now I have tried this with a bit of, um, what's the word, um, cling film underneath, sort of between the leaf and the and the um, mug, but it does tend to leave little kind of crinkly lines. So depending on whether you want to go through the um, pain in the bottom of trying to remove it from the glass or, you know, which, which pain do you want? <laughs> Do you want it to look a little bit crinkly on the edges or do you want it to um, stick like the proverbial um, here? So we'll just keep teasing, keep pulling and eventually it will start to come off in theory. It is loosening, you just need to sort of keep just pulling away. Being gentle, of course, because it's quite delicate, but the stitching should give it a decent amount of strength to it, so it should be okay. Whoops. Well, we should use that to our advantage. And now is to get further in. just pop a little bit of water back on there to hold it hold it back together again in a bit so here we have our little bowl now what we're going to do is set fire to it so the little holes which are here I create by burning little holes in here so I know, again, we're all grown-ups, fire is hot and could set fire to your bowl. So make sure there's some water on hand. But we're not stupid. We know these things. Right, sometimes it helps to have two incense sticks because they do tend to go out from, from overuse. So what we're going to do is basically burn all the edges of the bowl like this. Now, you can have fun and play and do whatever you like around here because these are dead leaves and they decay in all kinds of different ways. So maybe this one has come down like that. It's a bit of a slow process, but imagine that it's a meditative thing. Maybe that one comes to here. But the veins of the leaf will basically be the edge of um, the stitching. So try to take the, the burnt edge. See, this has taken a while to get through because the incense sticks cooled down and you've got two layers of sometimes where the joins, where you've got two leaves joining together. There we go. So just push the incense stick to the tip of the stitching. And then maybe there's a hole here. There we go. And maybe there's a hole here. Try to make sure that they, they're not too round, the holes. So um, when you get a slight point on your incense stick, try to sort of drag it through a little bit so it's it's not just to be, they're not all the same. So maybe this bit has burnt, has decayed right back. And maybe this bit. Sometimes if you push too hard, the end, the hot end drops off your incense stick. So just be mindful of uh, where that could land. See, I should normally do this on top of my cutting mat, but it's so grim, I'm a bit embarrassed. See, maybe that one is cut all the way back here. You want to be a bit careful doing too many all the way down, otherwise your bowl won't hold together. But anyway, you get the idea. 
I will continue with this and when I have finished I will show you what exactly what it looks like. Right, so if you have got any little bits that you are a bit worried about, all you need to do is put a little bit of dissolving fabric in there like that because happily it dissolves in water. So despite having forgotten to bring my water over here, all you need to do is just moisten it and give it a little rub and the whole thing will go sticky again and disappear and in effect glue it all back together. Ta-da! Right, so here we are. Uh, the last little job basically is to just have a little look round and see if you can see any bits that just don't look quite right to you. So perhaps this bit needs a little bit of extra shaping like that. Um, maybe there's a few bits that are a little bit too round. See these four holes or five holes here, they're just a little bit too uniform. So maybe we'll put these two together and try and try and create, it's, it's, it burns more easily into a kind of lozengy sort of a shape. But if you can try and use the tip of the incense to, to sort of Pull it slightly out of out of that lozenge shape. Anyway, so yes, just sort of tinker about until it looks how you'd like it to. Sometimes you get um, like here. There was a little overlap through the, the front and the back, so just make sure that the hole goes through both pieces of. Um, of the paper but I think we're pretty much done. A hole there, maybe something in here. Um, so there we are. So if you've enjoyed this video please um, please like and subscribe it would mean, uh, mean a huge amount to me um, and do please let me know in the comments what your ideas and thoughts are about a um, a little kit and what you'd like to see in it and the sort of prices that you might be um you know i just just like to know your thoughts that's all um but yeah i hope you've enjoyed it and uh, thank you ever so much for watching bye bye